This is seven national news and in our top story. Dubai's Crown Prince and Chairman of the Dubai Executive Council, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has launched the My Community A City for Everyone initiative, which looks to empower people with disabilities through enhancing existing projects and initiatives, as well as developing new opportunities. According to news agency WAM, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan has directed all government departments and institutions in Dubai to take immediate and necessary measures for the initiative. It looks to highlight awareness on the importance of integrating people with disabilities into the society and extending to them all aspects of support to enable them to carry out their roles as individuals and to bring about a positive change in their environment. The Dubai Crown Prince stated that they are keen to give equal opportunities for all and that they want all members of society to be positive partners in the development process. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan has also instructed the immediate drafting of a law to protect disabled individuals in Dubai, as well as the launch of a hotline to report any sign of discrimination, abuse, negligence or exploitation against any person with special needs. The 16th Abu Dhabi International Petroleum Exhibition and Conference, ADIPEC, opened today under the theme Energy for All in a Changing World. His Highness Sheikh Haza bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the National Security Advisor of the UAE, inaugurated the third largest oil and gas event in the world. According to participants, it continues to grow annually and has become an important platform for the industry. This year, the event sees the launch of the Young Adipec programme, which aims to create an academic outreach programme and prepare students for potential career opportunities in the oil and gas industry. The Petroleum Institute is running a series of activities to raise awareness and interest among students, while General Electric is showcasing their technologies and solutions, as well as programme, that aim to support the development of the industry's local and regional human resource. 50% of the uh, talent in this industry is going to retire over the next five years, which creates a significant opportunity to bring you know, the young, younger generation and talent into, into this industry. We have a program that we launched a couple of years ago. It's called the uh, Young Engineering Panel. And again, we, where we work very closely with the, uh, with the end users, with academia and with the uh, younger graduating uh, talent and the idea behind this program is to communicate what GE is all about as a work environment and the significant growth opportunity it provides for uh, people looking at joining the oil and gas uh, sector. We're from the Petroleum Institute which was founded over 10 years ago now by uh, His Excellency Omar Yusuf bin Yusuf um, to produce graduates that can work in the uh, ADNOC group of companies. ADNOC needs at the moment are about a thousand graduates a year. So we need to promote um, science and engineering to um, the local students and get them interested in science. And one of the ways we're doing that here is by doing some hands-on activities on chemistry and some physics to really get them excited about chemistry and science and think about this as a profession. According to participants, the event continues to grow annually and has become an important platform for the industry. Schneider Electric, a global specialist in energy management and winner of the Zayed Future Energy Prize last year, puts emphasis on sustainability for the industry. But the oil and gas industry is a, is a very intensive uh, consumer of electricity. Therefore, uh, the, all the companies now are looking for decreasing their bills and uh, it's good to take on the build side, but it has an effect on the planet. So we try to have a, a solution for that. We, we propose them some, uh, some solution to decrease their bills. And uh, it has a good effect for everybody, for the, for the end user that is buying something that is cheaper and consuming less. And for us that we can provide added value and uh, trying to optimize his, his, uh, his, uh, his industry. 
An estimated 10,000 people are feared dead and 4.3 million affected after the powerful typhoon Haiyan struck the central Philippines on Friday. And the Filipino community here in the UAE has begun relief efforts for the victims of one of the strongest storms to have ever struck the country. Typhoon Haiyan hit six islands of the Philippines, with torrential winds reaching around 300 kilometers per hour. According to a UN humanitarian agency, more than 330,900 people are displaced, with around 4.3 million affected. According to Her Excellency Grace Princessa, the Philippines ambassador to the UAE, the cost of the disaster will be in the millions. And she further added that the embassy and the Filipino community here in the UAE have stepped up their efforts for disaster relief. Oh, it, it must be in the millions, uh, the damage. That's why people are just trying to, our authorities on the ground are just trying to estimate because they were just there yesterday and I think there's no communication in some parts. So I think it's still stock taking of how much damage uh, the typhoon brought to the Philippines. The community, of course, they're worried, especially for those who came from the place that was hit by the ty super typhoon. So right now, the community in Dubai, uh, I think, is doing their own fundraising. Our community here in Abu Dhabi has a group also called Bayanihan Council, B-A-Y-A-N-I-H-A-N. It's like the collective spirit of the Filipinos to, to unite when um, there's a common cause for us. So we have ready money for this the community, but I think they will still go on and make some more fundraising efforts so that we can send, that we can send more. In order for this uh, moment, when I came here as ambassador, we have set up a, an umbrella organization of all the heads of associations that has a committee called Disaster P Committee. So when this event happened in the Philippines, they have ready funds to send to the Red Cross or wherever they wish to do. But of course, as the ambassador, I'm letting out the word that such and fundraising is ongoing. So that's the role of the embassy right now. In response to the urgent need of food supplies for the victims, the United Nations World Food Programme has mobilized around two million US dollars for immediate response. And they also plan to airlift 40 metric tons of high energy biscuits from Dubai, enough to feed about 120,000 people a day. The HEBs or the high energy biscuits that we send in, this is always the first response to an emergency, um, mainly because they're a, they're a dry biscuit and you don't need cooking. So you can actually get these high energy biscuits, which are very nutritious, hold the basic nutrition. And the 40 metric tons will feed about 120,000 people for a day or 70,000, 17,000 people for a week. Now, this is only the first response from Dubai coming on that. We've been talking with our country officers who have actually instilled some of their people in the ground um, in Takaoban, Takaloban, sorry. Um, but they're having a lot of communication issues, obviously, because all the GSM networks are down and they're, they're trying to do it through VHF communication. It's one of the biggest challenges. Uh, what we've done from here at the moment is over the weekend, we sent in uh, an emergency coordinator. So he's already arrived in Manila. He'll be running the emergency tele telecommunications cluster for all the agencies plus WFP. Um, and then over the weekend, we've sent the basic equipment, some satellite phones, VHF radios, HF radios, so they can start establishing uh, communications between the country office and the affected areas. International cricket stars from Pakistan and South Africa gathered together on Saturday for the official inauguration of the Burgil Hospital's Advanced Surgery Unit for Sports Medicine and Physiotherapy. The opening comes ahead of this, of this week's T20 matches and the unit is managed by a team of experts and led by the unit's chief physiotherapist, Dr. Otmar Siegfried and Dr. Faisal Hyatt Khan. Siegfried previously worked as the head of the Olympic medical base and as a doctor for the national football team, while Khan was the physiotherapist for the Pakistan national cricket team and Australian softball and football teams. 
Both doctors at the event were able to give some last minute advice to both sides before the T20 match, which is running from the 13th to the 15th of November. This included adding movement to your life and avoiding pills and surgery whenever possible. They added that physiotherapy can drastically add a better living experience for a patient and that they, can, that they also take a holistic approach. It is a new facility uh, in this uh, region because sports uh, medicine is very, uh, uh, let's say, underperformed in this uh, region. And uh, we started to create a, a new hospital with 35 uh, beds in this region to uh, serve the injured sports guys. And I think this is a, a great pleasure to have uh, you know, all these possibilities in this uh, hospital then to uh, treat these uh, injuries. UAE, we realize a very young uh, population and um, these are active people. And uh, when you remember all um, tower, all apartment has a special gym. And when uh, they use the gym and, and every sports facilities you are able to use, you will injure. And then you need these sports medical services to get back to your activities. And finally, looking to other news now, Harvey Nichols Dubai recently unveiled its festive Renaissance aristocracy-inspired window display and a newly decorated department store. The display used a contemporary claret red and rich gold colour scheme, dressed with lavish decorations, while all three levels now feature a dramatic selection of elegant bespoke baubles to create an enchanting and magical festive ambiance. Bringing the real magic alive, though, was entertainment, which included a live musical, exclusive offers and a festive animation. Some of the special offers for this year include a chance to win one of three luxury experiences at Grosvenor House when you spend 3,000 dirhams in store between November the 7th and December the 4th. Adding to the celebrations, Michelin-starred celebrity chef Gary Rhodes was also in store with festive dishes and tasty treats, offering a preview into his new menu for the soon-to-be-launched Rhodes W1 at the Grosvenor House. Basically, here we have Harvey Nichols, which is a great British store, and I'm all about great British food. So it's a perfect relationship for both parties. You know, I love this store in London, as you can imagine, and equally love it here. And I'm hoping that all of the guests this evening are going to enjoy some of these nice little sort of British favourites with one or two extra as well that we're going to offer to everybody this evening. So there's a great marriage between the two. For the festive season here in Dubai, I am going to be here cooking away. At Christmas, I'm going to be cooking it at our new restaurant in Abu Dhabi, which is called Rhodes 44 at the new St. Regis Hotel on the Corniche. And for New Year's Eve, I'm going to be at the Royal Meridian Hotel here in Dubai um, at our restaurant, Rhodes 2010. So I'm looking forward to that. So I do a little appearance in both over that Christmas period. So I like to make sure I'm still in the kitchen, even on those great days. We're launching the 2013 Festive Windows. So uh, we've got a beautiful scheme, opulent, gold, very glamorous, designed um, by our creative team, inspired by the Renaissance Age. Um, in store, we've got the launch of our festive merchandise and we're able to show our customers all the key looks and the key trends for the coming season. Um, we're also lucky enough to have celebrity chef Gary Rhodes in store with us and he's serving up um, a fabulous festive feast for all our customers tonight. In addition to all the festive activities and the fun that's going on in the store, we've got a great new collection of footwear and fashion so that for all the festive activities and, and uh, activities that are going on, we can dress you from head to toe, making sure you're looking glamorous for the festive season.